Starfarers and Thardians in space. On the surface of the planet Kala. Sand, sand, and more sand. This planet is a dust bowl. The wind blows strong. Sand dunes are a dime a dozen. A battered red land-based craft sits on the surface, entrance open. <clears throat> Smoke pours from the hull. A man lies motionless on the ground. A hulking gray metallic scorpion-like ship lands. Sand is scattered in all directions as the engine whines. Four creatures burst from the hatch and race down a ramp. They clutch powerful blasters in their claws. The creatures are Tharnians, none under seven foot, all clad in battle armor. Harsh, russet-colored reptilian skin and luminous slit-like eyes complement fangs and claws. The lizards walk upright, tongues flickering periodically. On an outcrop, Eclipse, thirties, is a monster of a man. Six-nine, ham-fisted, built like a brick dooney. Sleep-deprived and in a crumpled uniform, he's an equally crumpled man. He sits holding a blaster with a long muzzle, a sniper's weapon. He looks down at a tattoo on his arm depicting a small boy. He finds resolve. He looks through the scope and his view tightens on a Tharnian's head. The Tharnians advance with suspicion. Crack! One of them falls to the ground. Kai, the man on the ground, is late twenties, Rambo muscular with an earring and an eye for trouble. He springs up, wielding dual hand blasters. He is dressed in the same standard issue uniform as the others. The fire in his eyes is now unleashed at his enemies. Crack after crack sounds as red energy strikes another Tharnian who falls where he stands. Kai yells in triumph. Jar, mid-thirties, a little unsure of himself, looks to his companions for strength. With strong features and build, he wears a golden pendant with his family crest, which features an eagle and a bear. Jar mans a cannon at the rear of the craft. He fires volleys of red energy at the now scrambling Tharnians, herding them towards his teammates. Ganna, twenties, attractive, wearing a ponytail and a purple daisy-like flower in her hair, has a strong body and mind. She has a chin piercing and a V tattoo on the back of her neck, where an end of the letter ends in a leaf. Her survival instinct matches the blaster she wields. The barrel of Ganna's weapon spins, and sizzling energy bombards the Tharnians from behind. She yells. One of the Tharnians falls dead, while another is wounded and drops his blaster. The surviving creature growls and leaps away with surprising speed, rolling twice before finding his feet. The lone Tharnian charges towards Kai, pulling a dagger from his boot. The dagger is thrown and just misses Kai's head. Kai has a blaster trained on the Tharnian. He remains calm and grins. Light flashes, and the Tharnian drops to the ground. And stay down, lizard. They'll be coming in numbers. Let's get out of here. Jar enters and looks at the Tharnian ship. Ganna enters, ponytail whipping in the breeze. I've got to get inside that Mercer. Jar heads toward the Tharnian ship. Kai watches after him with disdain. You know he only came because of you? What a pussy. Ganna snorts, but doesn't let down her guard. Eclipse nods and watches after Jar. He's the reason you're still alive. I heard he got a Bronze Star four years ago aboard the Delta. That's something. Why do you think we listen to him instead of General Simulator? Speaking of which... Forbes, mid-forties, enters and swaggers towards the group. With four stars on his collar, his uniform is black, and his heart blacker. Good work, troops. I'm sure it looked quite spectacular from the safety of the ship, sir. A general can't direct the battle from the front line, second lieutenant. The group starts toward the land craft. Forbes stops, as does Kai. Eclipse continues towards the vessel with Ganna, and both exit. Where's Jar? Checking out the takedown. He's going to try and pilot it. We'll get him one minute, then we're moving out, with or without him. Ganna shoots a worried look after Jar. Later, inside the craft, it's confined and dark, as though the vehicle's in stealth mode. No sign of Jar yet. Elvin, late 40s, enters. Give him a choice between stroking an engine or a woman, and the engine would win every time. What does he think he's doing? We're going to have Tharian swarming all over the place any second. Kai and Forbes enter. Here we go. Looks like at least one patrol. Where is he? Forbes moves over to examine the display for himself, pushing Kai aside as he does so. Kai gives him a filthy look. They're coming in fast. Get us out of here. What about Jar? We can't just ditch him. If we stay, we're as good as dead. Ganna looks over to Kai. He just shrugs his shoulders. 
Sand churns as the tornado speeds away. Inside the Mercer, Jar sits in the captain's chair, working the controls. Design is alien, with holographic instruments, honeycomb panels, amber lighting, and displays with indecipherable information. Come on, talk to me! A screen shows Thardian Rugor. Bigger and stronger than most of his ilk, he wears armor and a fearsome helmet. Rugor to 399, report. Rugor's head tilts as he sees Jar. He bares his fangs. Rugor! So you're the Lizard King around here. Where's the crew of your ship? Indisposed. Well, disposed of, actually. This is very provocative action on Thernia's part. Attacking peacekeepers. You overthrew Abaddon and seized control of Callum's resources. Trenonine is precious, which is why you came. Our ships don't fly without it, but it wasn't our motivation. Abaddon was a bad man. We liberated his world. It was not yours to liberate. Two hundred million Thardian troops now oppose you. You will pay for waking the dragon. As Jar turns, Rugor sights Jar's pendant and hisses. Jar notices and touches it. And the prophecy will not be fulfilled. Meanwhile, inside a hidden cave, this, the fissure has a rubble-strewn floor with equipment set up indiscriminately. Looks like a bomb went off and no one had time to clean up. Kai crouches beside Ghana, who studies a scanner device. I've got something. Looks like a Merzer. Closing fast. Damn it. It's either Tharnian patrol or Jar's done it. If it's the latter, we're saved. If it's the former, we're dead. They all watch on with tense eyes. The Tharnian base is a massive gleaming tower on Callum that stretches toward infinity, like a giant metal fist. Inside the base, a shifty Tharnian in Carthu stumbles towards Tharnian Rodagog. Rodagog is gargantuan. Seated on an elevated platform, he stretches. Commander, as impossible as it seems, <clears throat> a Merzer has been stolen. Send fighters in pursuit. Bring it down. Rugor is to lead the squadron. Incarthu nods and storms away. Back inside the cave, Jar enters and is greeted by high fives and a hug from Ghana. Forb washes on frostily, arms folded. Everyone into the Merzer. We're leaving. Let's move. Forbes raises a hand. He watches in disgust as Ghana, Kai, and Eclipse rush from the cavern. Elvin follows, shrugs his shoulders at Forbes, and slinks out. Forbes fumes. Now why do they follow your orders when I outrank you? Maybe they want to stay alive. There'll come a day when I'm back in command. You count on that. Now that it's just the two of us... Forget it. You're not my type. Besides, I hear, I hear you've got a hairy arse. Better than talking to one. Why the hell did we really come to Callan? Because you're slow, I'll recap. Callan refused to abandon its engagement program, and it took provocative action against its neighbors, including the sacred world. And now the Tharnians have stepped in to chase us away. Why? Who cares? We have the United Planets behind us. They might have won the battle, but they cannot win the war, and the war is, after all, what we wanted. Forbes exits. Jar watches after him, confused. Moments later, the Mertzer taxis away from the cave, and a Viridian beam strikes and smashes the face of the cave. Boom! The explosion rocks the Mertzer. Inside the Mertzer, the occupants are thrown about. Oh, what was that? Looks like they've nuked the cavern. No turning back now. Jar sits in the captain's chair, with helm control before him. The controls are designed for claws, but he assimilates quickly. Forbes stands beside him, arms folded. He thinks he should be in that chair. Kai watches with begrudging eyes. How'd you fluke the controls? It's not as hard as it looks. Everyone is thrown about as the craft hits turbulence. Jar struggles correcting course. Okay, maybe it is. Ganna, how are you doing? Ganna studies a series of holographic readouts, trying to make sense of them. Elvin wanders by, amazed. He strokes a conduit lovingly. Listen to her purr. I can't wait to lick what's under the hood. Okay, let's see if this thing can get us back to Earth. Jar's face is a mask of concentration. Inside the Tharnian base, Imkarthu listens to radio chatter. Come back. We have the enemy Mercer on visual, awaiting your orders. Rodagog enters. Engage and destroy. Rodagog clenches his fists. Back inside the Mercer, Forbes watches Jar with envious eyes. Ghana studies a display. We're out of Callan's atmosphere. Don't get excited just yet. We've got company. 
Merzer's coming in fast. They're fighters, all right. Kai opens his mouth to speak, then stops himself. He folds his arms and looks to Jar. In space, Mertzer 399 has four smaller gray Mertzer fighters in pursuit. Stars rush by at wicked velocity. The leading fighter has yellow flames and skulls painted on it. Inside the Mertzer, Ghana looks at Jar desperately. Jar, do something! I'm open to suggestions. Jar notices three symbols in alien script set in a holographic screen. He reaches out to touch one. Don't touch them. We don't know what they'll do. Jar glares at Forbes, then touches the first symbol. It glows yellow. An escape capsule departs the Mertzer. Rugor watches the escape capsule eject. I will deal with the escape capsule. Remain on target and fire at will. Acknowledged, I am engaging. Rugor's view screen spins and he moves off to intercept. The three pursuing ships fire at Mertzer 399. Rugor's Mertzer breaks away from the others and veers toward the capsule. Inside the Mertzer, Jar keeps his eyes on the view screen. What's the frack? We've lost an escape capsule. Looks like we still got three left. Jar touches the second symbol. Warning! Exhaust port ejected. The ship rocks and all are thrown about. The rear of Mertzer 399 detaches and engulfs the three pursuing vessels, swallowing them whole. Rugor's Mertzer swerves, taking some damage but surviving. It spins out of control. Gana runs over to Jar. I don't believe it. You've destroyed them. We're free! She hugs Jar and plants a kiss on his cheek. Eclipse applauds, looks at his tattoo, and smiles. We're going home, people! Let's do the safety dance. We can dance if we wanna, we can leave Forbes behind. I do believe it's time to party. You up for a good time, Jar? Jar smiles, but doesn't take his eyes off the screen. Later, in New York City, Earth, hundreds of years in the future, makes a beehive look pedestrian. Thousands of air cars swarm around New York City's futuristic needle-like towers. Inside the Control Central watch room, a control room full of people, high-tech screen, maps, and gadgets, Private Robinson, 20s and dressed in a military uniform, studies the scanner in front of him and frowns. Sergeant Spearing, 50s and stern, marches into view. This had better be important. Robinson salutes. Incoming dragon ship. Hell, open a channel and arm the defense sphere. Someone get me the president. Crackle. This is General Forbes. Are you receiving me, Central? Cheers and gushes. Spearing's jaw drops. General, welcome home. Others gather around Spearing. The smiles are broad. Later, in a cafe in New York. The cafe is elegant, with a, with a cascading waterfall in the background. The vista offers an escape from the bustle of the city. Tables, chairs, and lovers of fine coffee are aplenty. Almond, oat, soy, and hemp milk signs are visible. Udaya, immaculately dressed and heavily bejeweled, is seated. She wears big gold hoops in her ears. She is Ghana's twin sister and looks identical except she wears her hair shorter. She also has the V tattoo. Ghana sits opposite her. I've ordered the scrambled tofu again. I need my energy for the two rendezvous I got booked for today. Lucky guys or gals. I might be the one who travels the stars, but I suspect you've been places I've never seen. Udaya pokes her tongue out at Ghana. It's pierced with a glowing ball projecting out from it. Ghana takes a coffee and sips. I'm glad you made it out, sis. The United Planets aren't going to let those lizards get away with killing our forces on Kalon. There will be a reprisal. Probably. Are you still keen on that weirdo jar? Udaya sips and her face lights up. The heart is deceitful about all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? He's my kind of rad. How are you and Kai? Ghana sips, removing a cheeky smirk. Udaya also sips, sizing up her sister. We don't need men, you know. I think they're once good for something, but for the life of me, I can't recall what. Mm, perhaps their wallets? No, back to Kai. He lies, he drinks, he cheats. I was worried he'd hit on you out there. We do look identical, you know. You think? I'm glad he didn't. They say no one can hear you scream in space. Hudaya offers a smile and takes a cautious sip of coffee. Inside the training center, Jar sits at his desk in an empty classroom, marking exams. He looks up at news broadcast being projected. A reporter, Ryder, early 40s, is a news hound wearing houndstooth. While his checked suit and flamboyant tie clash, they are hip. 
No apology has been issued for the attack on our peacekeeping force, and the Tharnian Empire has warned Earth not to return to Kallen. With unrest in the middle system at an all-time high, some of Kallen's neighbors are indicating they support the Tharnian incursion. A tiny device in Jar's pocket hums stridently. He answers it, and Forbes' face is seen. You. I won't waste time waiting for a salute. I bring good news. We're going back to Cal. I'd love to kick some Tharnian tail, but do we need to fly together? We don't share the same vision. We don't need to. You're enlisted. My vision is your vision. Besides, the president insisted you come along despite my objections. The screen snaps off. Moments later, at the target range, an open field full of targets... Soldiers stand behind Kai as he lines up a shot. Blam! The 3D human-shaped target takes one between the eyes. A young, cute cadet applauds him. He notices. Hey, if you want to stick around, I've got some more moves I can teach you. She smiles, but doesn't commit. Bleep! Kai is annoyed and answers his communicator. The soldiers, cadet included, move off. He shakes his head as Jar appears on screen. Jar? WTF? Forbes says I'm going back to Callum. To hell with him. I'm not going. Not with that codpiece calling the shots. Kai curses. We all want revenge on the Tharnians. You because you're driven for justice or some shit, and me because I'm a rock star and war is my gig. Well, have a good time. I've got... interests here I need to pursue. You mean Ganna? She's coming too. Forbes is putting the whole band of misfits back together. Kai disconnects the call and shakes his head. He checks out the cadet, who is now watching another soldier take aim. He grunts in anger and lines up another shot. Later that night, in the Manhattan Center's grand ballroom. Big building, big entrances by immaculately dressed people. Air cars dropping off their guests look like 24th century limos. Security ensures only the invited are getting in. Inside, chandeliers from the ceiling. Staircases to heaven, enough booze flowing to send anyone to hell. Those without food or drink are served by eager waiters in moments. A big band plays a well-known tune on the stage. Jar, Kai, Eclipse, and Elvin chat. Elvin's girlfriend, oddly attractive in a plastic Barbie way, holds Elvin's hand. Kai has had one drink too many. He looks at Elvin's girlfriend. She looks back at him and smiles. Last night on Earth, people. I'll drink to that. Cha-ching! This should be a freaking kick-arse counter-strike. We're stopping at Zenite en route. Who knows what our allies have in store for those reptiles? Jar fumbles his drink and smiles weakly. They killed lots of our friends. I still see their faces when I dream. Ghana's coming. Chin up, pal. Uptown girls don't like it when all you do is take them downtown. Jar swigs his drink with verve. He takes some vegan food from a table and munches it nervously. Ghana enters, wearing a long satin dress, with enough slits to ensure many sets of male eyes follow her every move. Hi, all. Murmurs of greetings. Ghana fires a glare at Kai, who turns away to hide his drink. Jar, you want to dance? Jar nods, dumps the sandwich, and the two exit. I don't want to spoil the mood, but things haven't been easy since Callan. Now we're going back again? Elvin gulps down a shot of something strong. You're going back to Callan? You workaholic! You never online when I need you! Her diamond earrings sparkle as she turns her head. Please, stay a while. Stay forever, won't you? No! Your program has come to an end! As it is written in The Road to Sentience, never let the hand you hold hold you down. Moving swiftly, she pours her drink in Elvin's face and exits. Some of the other guests laugh. Elvin watches after her, mopping his face with a handkerchief. Oh dear, I shall miss her. She's a series 7,000 pleasure bot, you know. Wait, wait, wait a second. She's a freaking robot? What's wrong with that? You've seen her parts. Eclipse raises an eyebrow and chuckles. He looks at the tattoo and takes a breath. Uh, Clearly not all of them. Kai watches after her far too closely, his lips making a silent whistle. He excuses himself, puts his drink down, and goes after her. Out on the balcony... Jar and Ganna dance cheek to cheek on a lofty balcony, which offers panoramic view of the city. Music suitable for a slow waltz plays in the background. They are alone. It's a lovely night. That daisy in your hair sure is pretty. Ganna takes the flower from her hair and twirls it. It's an Idaho mountain wildflower. Unlike many flowers that attract insects, 
These act as an insecticide. It's botanical. Its botanical name is Aragon aspergillus. Of course. I knew that. Gana looks down at the flower, then back to Jar. She returns it to her hair. It's derived from the Greek. Ari means early, and Geron means old man. These flowers have gray, bushy leaves and stems. So you have an old man watching over you with a fly swat. <laughs> Gana's smile broadens, and Jar leads her into a twirl. Gana is as graceful as a swan. We don't swat our fellow earthlings. I prefer, I prefer to think the flower is wild, but also wise, able to keep bees away. Still don't like bees, huh? What's the like? They seek us out, try to taste our nectar, take what they need. If we let them, then buzz off. If they return, it's only because they want some more. Ghana takes control of the dance and leads Jar. She steps up the tempo. Jar grins and struggles to keep up. Ghana draws closer to Jar. Their eyes lock and they stop dancing. Ghana leads him to a large painting on the wall. The painting depicts a woman like Kudaya, lying in lush grass surrounded by animals. Fish and a lobster smile from a stream. In this vista, all lives are precious. Another one of your paintings. Lovely. It's amazing that animals still trust us after what we did to them for so long. Agreed. Shame we still have a thirst to kill. This time it's the Tharnians. Sometimes it's kill or be killed. I'm not trying to justify war. I just wish things were different. Jar leans to kiss Ghana. She tilts her head to receive, and their lips connect. Meanwhile, back in the grand ballroom, Kai exits the toilet and looks disheveled. He sheepishly moves back to the others. Elvin's girlfriend then exits the toilet, unseen by the others, and heads off elsewhere. Kai picks up his drink and stands next to Eclipse and Elvin. If you stand for nothing, you'll fool for anything. Wish I could join my brother protesting about those new mining rigs, but duty calls. And the only thing in life worth standing for is your next paycheck, my friend. Look, for which way the breeze is blowing and jump on board. Just because we're soldiers doesn't mean we can't think for ourselves. Udaya, Gana's twin, enters and marches towards Kai. I won't drink tonight, he says. Sure. Oh, and I know about that young cadet, too. Hey, no, I mean, cut me some slack. You don't have to put on the red light, you, you, you die, you don't. She slaps him hard, turns on her heel, and walks away. He drops his drink. Later, in space, outside the planet Zenite, a red diamond-shaped Earth ship with red escorts glides through space. The furnaces from her engine glow white as she sails on. Jar peers through a porthole. Four Zenite fighters close. These yellow, shimmering ships have fierce prongs jutting out. They assume escort positions, and all ships fly towards Zenite, a yellow, luminous world with a series of rings around it. The ships enter the atmosphere. Zenite is covered by iridescent silver water. A series of gold, luminous towers pepper the surface. A massive bridge and tower stand side by side in the center of a busy city. In a conference room on Zenite, the rectangular room gleams white. A silver oblong table and high-backed chairs host Forbes and Jar. Four Zenite High Counselors flank Admiral Elu. Elu, a tower at 8-2, is flawlessly symmetrical. Her sylph-like body is almost translucent. Her dome-shaped head cases two dazzling chrome-yellow eyes. She glides forward. Zenites speak in a high-pitched series of sounds. Imagine rubbing the tops of wine glasses to make music, then crossing that sound with a dolphin's cry. Subtitles are displayed whenever the Zenites speak. Welcome, fellow members of the Confederation of the Ready and Able. This fabled cloaking fleet of yours, is it ready to go? With Bilderberg's blessing, it is ready. All 15 members of the Puranai Alliance voted to back your president in the United Planets. Our ship on the line, Captain Kingva, will accompany you. Ships that can cloak? <laughs> my, my. Your complement of personnel is most unusual. Safety requirements demand a crew complement of eight. Your president thought it'd be fitting if the survivors from the Callum let the counter strike. We'll be in invisible ships. What can go wrong? Jar ponders. Later, outside Zenite, a sleek yellow Zenite warbird is surrounded by Zenite ships. 
80 yellow Zenite batter- battlecruisers are visible, as are Zenite fighters. The warbird overtakes a massive Zenite stormbringer. Inside the Zenite warbird, Jar checks the charge in his hand blaster, and Forbes strolls around the flight deck. Ghana approaches Kai. You know you blew a good thing with my sister. You and Jar are very much alike. Neither of you know when you're on a good thing. Kai looks at his shoes as though he'd like to crawl into them. We're on the verge of galactic transformation. All we needed was a convenient crisis, and all the planets will accept the new order. I'm not so sure. You know something we don't? Many things. Elvin has his back to the others, and is busy doing something to a display screen. Elvin, were you licking that scanner? You sick freaking monkey. Elvin turns, red-faced. In space, on the hunt, engines simmer as the yellow Zenite ships glide through empty space. Later, inside the Zenite warbird, the flight deck lights are dim. Most of the crew are sleeping. Jar sits alone, gazing into the view screen. Kai enters and sits next to him. You out here doing some knitting or playing with yourself? I'm not the one here without a gal. Point. So what are you doing? The void makes me think about my great-grandfather, Moroz. I like to think that he was a better man than my father. Mm. My old man was great. Taught me how to drink. Kissed me when I made lieutenant. Kai sits on the flight couch next to Jar. Lucky you. Moroz was a pioneer in his day. Left Earth for uncharted space nearly a century ago. Kai sighs. Don't reflect or look back. Just be here. Now. See the enemy and engage. I'm not sure who the enemy is. Don't give me that conspiracy shit. We're the good guys, okay? Fact. Jar looks over to him. I'm not so sure. Kai shakes his head and looks at Jar with undecided eyes. Meanwhile, in space, outside the planet Kallen, a Tharnian patrol of two gray Mertzers flies side by side. Rugor is in one, and Kildas in the other. Kildas is not as large as Rugor, but is equally ugly. The Legion are timorous, hiding behind their technology. Were they not so advanced, we would have found and decimated them decades ago. Turn your thoughts to Kallen, the barbican they were rebuilding. What purpose could a structure so tall serve? Wait. I'm detecting something closing at outermost range. I have it. No life forms. I will investigate. Return to the fleet and inform Rodagog. Acknowledged. Whoosh. Kilda's Mertzer breaks away. Rugor's Mertzer increases velocity. Meanwhile, the Warbird travels with the Zenite fleet. On the flight deck, Elvin talks to Forbes. Ghana yaps with Eclipse and Kai. Jar watches Ghana with hungry eyes. Crackle. A Zenite named Kingva appears. Typically Zenite, Kingva's eyes pierce Jar's. Captain Jar, our scout vessels has seized transmitting. Prepare for battle. I read you, Kingva. We'll be ready. The screen blanks. The perfect battle. Big enough to matter, but small enough to win. Elsewhere in space, hundreds of Tharnian ships streak through space. Mertzers of three distinctly different sizes are followed by much larger ships. Authoritarian shades of murky gray gives the fleet a sinister presence. Rugor's fighter leads them. Inside the Tharnian base on Kallen, Inkarthu stands before Rodagog. Rodagog is seated on an elevated throne. They cannot escape us now, Commander. They do not desire to escape. They have come to fight. An Earth fleet follows two days behind. They wish to reclaim Kallen. Back in space, the Zenite warbird and fleet are Kallen bound. Space around the desert world gets busy. Aboard the Zenite warbird, Ganna studies the screen before her. The flower is still in her hair. Troops! Glory awaits! It's blood that turns the pages of history. Walking past, Jar squeezes Ganna's hand discreetly. She manages a half smile. Game on! I've got incoming bogeys. How many? Fifty. No. A hundred. More appearing every second. I've got comms coming in on a wide band to all ships. Jaw, prepare to die. I sense your fear. Let's blast that reptile into the ether. Cloaking time. Let's see how you like this party trick, Rugor. In space, Rugor's Mercer closes. Hundreds of small Mercers follow. Larger ships are in tow. The Zenite fleet awaits. Inside Rugor's ships, 
Rugor studies the instruments and adjusts some controls with a snarl. A haze develops over each sea knight ship. Swoosh! They all vanish. Rugor's jaw drops as though someone's stolen his lunch. Rugor to Rodagog. Incoming fleet has employed stealth technology. I'm firing tachyon particles with a wide beam. All ships to follow my lead. Rugor operates controls and fires. Purple particles burst through space and stick to the invisible ships, allows them to be seen. Snarling, he fires on one of them. Boom, it explodes. In space, hundreds of Tharnian ships fire tachyon particles across space. The incoming fleet is revealed as the particles stick to the ships like glue. The Tharnians open fire. Zap! Kaboomba! Thud! Boom! The largest Tharnian ships smash multiple targets out of space. Several other Xenite ships take hits and their cloaks fail. The Warbird is one of them. Rugor goes after it. The Warbird turns, slowly. Blam! Rugor fires again. Inside the Xenite Warbird, Eclipse falls as the ship rocks. Jar struggles at the controls. They see us. We're taking heavy damage. Since when have ships started flying with tachyon cannons? Hell, somebody do something. I order it! I'm pulling invasive maneuvers. Ruger's all over us. Boom. The crew are thrown about. A klaxon wails. Smoke appears. Navigation's offline. I'm trying to get the damage under control. Elvin, help me out here. Elvin is full of panic. He freezes. I can't die yet. I, I haven't even had a chance to stroke the engines. Someone take the cannon. Ganna, turn that infernal thing off. Ganna moves and the klaxon stops. What cannon? It's gone! This is just freaking great. Someone give me a shipwide report. We're screwed. Smoke appears. Jar looks at Ganna, takes a breath. In space, the warbird turns away and flees. Explosions, boom. Blam, blam, Rugor fires again. Clack, boom, clack. The Tharnian fleet unleashes fury. Unseen Xenite ships return fire. Yellow beams appear from moving tachyon particles and destroy Tharnian ships. Space is chaos. A massive Tharnian colossal explodes, taking several members of the Tharnian fleet with it. Inside Rugor's ship, kaboom! A fireball lights up Rugor's cabin as a near- nearby ship explodes. He keeps his ship on the ailing warbird. He snarls and fires. Back aboard the Xenite warbird, Forbes lurches around the flight deck as explosions fill the viewscreen. Smoke is everywhere. Elvin sprawls over a console, forehead bloodied. Elvin is dead. I order- Abandoned ship! Everyone to the life capsules. Wait, I'm in command here. They scramble. Forbes is left alone. He growls and runs after them. Moments later on the lower deck, Jar, Ganna, Eclipse, Kai, and Forbes rush through narrow corridors. Steam hisses and red lights flash around them. Warning, life support has failed. Engine shutting down. Jar touches some symbols and a hatch opens, revealing a clam-like shell. Ganna, get in. Come with me. I'll follow in another one with Kai. These capsules aren't built for two, but the rest of us will have to take our chances. I won't leave you. Tears threaten to form in Ganna's eyes. He kisses her on the forehead. She turns and enters the hatch. With forlorn eyes, she looks back at Jar and tries to protest as the hatch closes. Why does she get her own capsule? We'll be crushed on impact if we share. Eclipse opens another hatch and forces Forbes inside. I bet you were never a sharer. Kai opens another one and enters. Jar follows. Inside Rugor's ship, Rugor watches three escape capsules eject. He keeps his aim fixed on the warbird and fires again. Boom, crack. The warbird, br- the warbird breaks apart. Rugor lines up the first capsule and fires, narrowly missing. He prepares to fire again. Inside Kingva's fighter, Kingva closes on Rugor's ship. He lines up Rugor's Mertzer and opens fire. Yellow beams sizzle and strike the Mertzer. You fly like the plebeian you are, Tharnian. Let me show you your place. Kingva fires again. Rugor is thrown forward as a furious explosion erupts. Rugor's Mertzer wobbles and returns fire. The return fire appears to be at empty space, but bang, crunch, strikes a target. Kingva's ship. Boom. It explodes. Rugor growls and rips open a panel in the floor and crams himself into a life capsule. His ship is on fire. Meanwhile, inside Ganna's life capsule, Ganna's eyes open and she takes a deep breath. The dull light inside the clam flickers. Scrape, the sound of metal on metal. 
The clam opens. The faces of two Tharnians appear. Unlike other Tharnians, they are clothed in cerulean colors. The Tharnians reach for her. Gana screams. Now on the planet Degash, Eclipse marches towards a smoking life capsule with a disinterested Forbes behind. The planet is lush with purple grass, mountains, trees, a stream trickling by. Eclipse pulls at the shell of the capsule. Forbes watches with folded arms. <clears throat> the top section opens. More smoke appears, and a dazed Kai is pulled from the capsule. Eclipse goes back and then pulls out Jar, who is coughing. I was hoping you were dead. Jar pulls away from Eclipse and collapses. He coughs and splutters. You're not quite the worst impersonation of a human being I've seen. There was this ape I saw once at the San Diego Zoo. Have you ever tried being nice? Just once? It's quite disarming, you know. The disarm get killed by the arm, hippie. Where's Ganna? No idea. She hasn't landed nearby. Let's find her. <clears throat> Jar moves off. The others stumble after him, except Forbes. He watches after them with angry eyes. Kai looks back for a moment, then back at Jar and Eclipse. Eclipse motions for him to follow, his forehead creased. He follows. Later that evening at the campsite, Jar and Kai sit by a crackling fire. Eclipse and Forbes sit opposite them. Jar gazes into the fire. She must have landed somewhere nearby. We'll search again tomorrow at first light. Yes, you will. You're not coming? What do I care about that peasant slut? That's it. I've had you. Jar stands, as does Forbes. Likewise. Eclipse stands. Sit down. I'm quite capable of taking out the trash. Jar and Forbes stand and move away from the others, circling each other. Eclipse shrugs and sits down. Kai sits next to him. It begins to rain. Mild drizzle becomes a heavy downpour. Jar runs towards Forbes with a yell and throws a right cross which connects. Smack! Forbes falls in a heap. Kai produces a gold bitcoin and points to Forbes. Eclipse nods. His eyes fall on Jar. Oh yeah! Rock on! Forbes stands and wipes blood from his lip. He leg sweeps Jar, who falls. Jar gets to his feet, shaking with anger. Jar swings. Forbes blocks and counters with a roundhouse kick. Jar ducks and lands a body blow. Forbes backs away. Where the hell did we go to Callan? I think it was all about resources. And finally he awakens from his slumber. Was liberating the populace really ever part of the agenda? Forbes picks up a long, thick branch and tests its strength. Crunch. He strikes Jar across the torso with it. Jar falls. The civvies bought it. Even with totalitarianism vanquished, ongoing allied casualties were inevitable. These are but the pangs of birth. But you're wrong. We don't care about the Trinity. Jar rolls and Forbes air swings. Jar stands, then pivots as Forbes swings and misses again. Nursing his arm, Jar picks up a branch and they clash face to face. Both push on their branches. Then why? Why start a war we cannot win? Wars are not fought for conclusive victory or gain. They're fought to realign the order of the cosmos. One power, all planets. Forbes blocks Jar's next attack, parries, and whack, hits Jar in the ribs. Oh, <coughs> I used to believe in the United Planets. Now I don't know what to believe. Jar leaps at Forbes. Forbes ducks and strikes Jar's head. Jar drops his branch and falls to the ground. Forbes clubs him again and stands over him to strike. Jar kicks his leg, rolls, and is on his feet. Forbes turns, too slow. Crunch. Jar nails him with a left hook to the body. A left round kick, then a right spin back kick. Forbes crumbles. Get up. We haven't finished dancing. Tell me what else you know. Woozy, Forbes staggers to his feet and backs away. Rigged elections. Bounty hunters making our rivals disappear. <clears throat> Controlling the middle systems. So much more I know. So little you'd understand. Jar throws a right cross, and Forbes hits the deck again. He drags Forbes to his feet. Tell me what else you know about Callan. <coughs> Eclipse, I order you to kill him. Eclipse laughs. He snatches Kai's bitcoin. Kai curses. Tell me or so help me, you'll die here. Okay. <clears throat> We're all finished anyway. The president wants to start a third system war. <clears throat> that way we eliminate those who oppose the galactic order. 
once the United Planets agree, it's showtime. And if they don't? If they don't get the votes to sanction it? What then? <laughs> and B, you're a part of it. Me? How? Whoosh! A dagger thuds in Forbes' chest and pins him to a tree. His expression freezes. Blood gushes from his gaping mouth like a pinned butterfly. He is completely still. What the hell? Rugor bursts through the undergrowth with a snarl. Eclipse rallies and leaps on Rugor. The Tharnian runs a second dagger through him and pushes his crumpled body to the ground. Eclipse's gaze to the heavens is lifeless. Kai spin kicks Rugor, expecting him to fall. He just looks pissed. Kai is seized by the throat as Jar struggles to his feet. Wait! I'm Jar! It's me you want! Me! Crunch! Kai is tossed into a nearby tree. Rugor marches towards Jar, bloody dagger raised. Meanwhile, outside Tharnia. Tharnia is a dark, menacing crimson world. Empty space nearby shimmers, and the outline of a small moon is visible for a fleeting moment. Then it is gone. Inside the ship named Warmonger, Ganna sits on a bunk in a tiny cell. An energy field between her and freedom flickers. Zoo, the field vanishes. Vegas, mid-thirties and buxom, is dressed in a dominatrix-style vegan leather trench coat. She wears stockings and heels, and has long locks and fingers adorned with gold signet rings. Her left pupil looks like a silver dollar. She circles Ganna, looking her up and down, almost seductively. Welcome, my lore. You are rather fetching, but I would have thought I'm more to Jar's taste. And just who the hell are you? My, you are a fiery one. I'm Vegas. I represent this Cerulean Legion. No one's heard of them in years. Until now. They have something in common with you. They want to hurt the Tharnian Empire. I'm listening. Good. Because you're the cheese. Jar is the mouse. And I'm the cat. Vegas licks her lips. Back at the campsite on Degash, Jar, battered and bruised, doesn't flinch as Rugor marches towards him. The rain pounds down. Time for you and your spirit to part, feeble human. Jar produces his blaster. Back off. Rugor slows and growls. I've still got business amongst the living. Jar raises the blaster with one arm. A black, cigar-shaped ship, 50 feet long with portholes along its side and long antennae twitching, roars through the sky. The UFO hovers, beams of light from it finding Jar and Rugor. Jar looks up, shielding his eyes. Rugor throws his dagger. It just misses Jar's head. Jar fires and blue flashes. A bolt strikes Rugor. Rugor falls, face first. Jar rushes over to Kai. The UFO descends in a nearby glade. Light from it remain, lights from it remain on Jar. Kai is dazed. Uh, uh, where'd that lizard go? I was just getting warmed up. Jar props Kai up against a tree and rushes over to Eclipse. He checks for a pulse. Damn it. Kai gets to his feet and shambles towards Jar. He's gone. Wright, overweight and 45, waddles toward them with an umbrella and a cane tucked under his arm. Wearing a peaked cap, white gloves, and retro 80s army attire, he appears ready to go on safari. He pokes the Tharnian with his cane. Tally-ho! Excellent work. Thing is, there's a ship full of them on its way here. Who are you? The last Great Britain? Near enough, sir. Brigadier Wright's the name. Now, do come along, chaps. Not so fast. This man was our friend. He looks rather dead to me. Unless you care to join him, I suggest you follow me. Wright turns and makes for the UFO. The rain intensifies as Jar starts digging. Kai lends a hand. Come now, we must make haste. We bury our dead. Wright continues towards the UFO. Come back here. Help us. Jar and Kai continue to dig with their hands. Rain has already filled the small hole. Kai watches them leave. He stops digging. He's going to leave without us. No, there are more Tharnians on their way, and he's our only ticket off this world. There's nothing else we can do for Eclipse. He was our friend! What are we going to tell his son? Exhausted, Kai stops digging and shakes his head. Jar continues to dig. Kai stands and turns away. He stops as Wright returns with four humanoid droids with shovels. They dig rapidly, and the hole is dug in seconds. Kai returns to help. 
Jar and Kai lift Eclipse's body and lower it into the hole. Jar closes his eyes, mumbles a quick prayer, then opens them. He removes a medal, a bronze star, from his pocket, and places it in Eclipse's hand. You deserve this more than I do. Kai reaches down Eclipse. Unseen by the others, he removes a bitcoin from his top pocket. Jar and Kai stand, Kai putting the bitcoin in his own pocket. Jar nods, and the hole is quickly covered by the droids. They all make for the UFO. Rugor's hand moves. In space, outside Degash, a Tharnian colossal approaches. Meanwhile, inside the UFO, the flight deck is a combination of high-tech panels and lights surrounded by exquisite Victorian decor circa 1900, including synthetic hardwood floors, elegant upholstered chaise lounges, and iron-forged pedestals. Wright slouches on a lounge with Jar and Kai, still drenched and muddy, standing before him. God, this place is like a frackin' museum. Where'd you get all this stuff? Kai reaches for a porcelain vase with no. a floral design. No, please don't touch that. I went to great lengths to steal it. We need to find Gana. Her capsule came down here somewhere. Now that's where you're mistaken. Only two capsules landed on the surface. The third was intercepted by an unidentified vessel. Unidentified? Yes, an observer of the battle, it seems. It'll be long gone. How do we find it? We don't. Where would you even suggest we start looking? Master Dom, a shaky creature with powerful limbs, enters. His face is spike-covered, his maw elongated, his eyes piercing. His tunic is branded with a bold, vermilion-colored scorpion emblem. This is Master Dom, my pilot. Not that the computer needs him, he's really just a precaution. Master Dom looks Jar and Kai up and down. He cites Jar's pendant and is surprised. Oh, well, you would ship off the old block. Jar looks at Mastodon curiously. Anyway, come aboard. I see you both like mud wrestling? Yes. We'll have to get you cleaned up. You're a real surprise and a long way from home. Earth? Your home, not mine. My descendants left Earth in the 23rd century. I'm part of the guild these days. Guild? What do you do exactly? Apart from rescue folk? Are you familiar with the Earth legend of Robin Hood? We're like him, except the giving to the poor part. Jar's eyes flash concern. Kai grins. Back in space, outside Dagash, the Tharnian Colossal closes. The UFO is gliding away. Inside the UFO, Wright watches Jar and Kai closely. Master Don checks some instruments. They are all seated. 64, get us out of here. Confirmed. The motor drones. Jar leans across to Wright. Kai starts eating a ration bar. Why did you come to rescue us? You're a fellow human. We couldn't just leave you to die. That was quite a battle. Who won? The Tharnians. The United Planets are negotiating with them now. Won't be long before there's a showdown. The United Planets? Let me guess. They want to declare war on Tharnia. Wrong. They voted against it. It was a close decision. What? Plan B? Wright fires Jar a curious look. Kai looks at the view screen and stretches. He's comfortable. Ah, this, uh, guild you mentioned, that's where we're headed? Indubitably. Soon you'll fly missions for us, such as escorts, thefts, trading, bounty hunting, even hijacks. You're galactic pirates? Intergalactic, actually. Make yourselves at home while we get out of here. My droids can cater to your every need. And I do mean every. Kai smiles sanguinely. Benson, a tubular droid on wheels with eyes like cherries and enough lights to double as a Christmas tree, whizzes by with a rattle and crashes into a wall. Uh, you'll have to excuse that one. He needs a service. Benson bounces off a wall, recovers, then accelerates into Jar's behind. Cool goat droids. Jar fires a dirty look at the droid. Benson, remove yourself before you kill someone. Benson whistles and skittles away. Crash. In space, outside Degash, the gray colossal hums towards the UFO. Back aboard the UFO, Wright gazes into the view screen in concern as the colossal looms. Jar and Kai stand. The Thornian vessel has diverted course and is heading towards us. They came to rescue Rugor. Now they're after us. Increase speed. Get us to warp velocity. 
Traversing the middle systems has always made me uncomfortable. Secondary engine failure, compensating. Fiddlesticks. I'll get to engineering and see what I can do. Master Don exits hurriedly. We are in some serious doo-doo, gentlemen. They all look at the view screen as the ship gets bigger and meaner, and meaner by the second. The Colossal closes on the UFO. Inside Ruger's Colossal, two pilots sit before an elevated Tharnian named Vidarok, indignant and clad in black. Commander, the unidentified ship is not responding to our hail. Ruger is still on the surface. His life sign is weak, but stable. This ship's presence is curious. I dislike curious things. Vidarok growls. Back aboard the UFO, Wright shudders as he watches the view screen. Kai and Jar stand by his side. The Tharnian ship on the screen gets bigger. Warning, Colossal is powering primary weapons. This is a sticky wicket. Let's head for the al belt. There are nearly 3,000 kilometers of asteroids to hide in. We'll never make it. Have you got manual override? Well, yes, but the computer's evasion patterns are second to none. Computers are predictable. Mind if I take the controls? Uh, I'm dubious, but also desperate. Wright steps back and gestures Jar to the helm controls. Jar sits and takes the yoke. Kai goes to speak, then crosses his arms, sighing. Let's see what you've got. Jar turns the yoke sharply, and Wright and Kai are sent reeling. In space... The Colossal fires at the UFO, which dodges, weaving an evasive course. It then turns toward the Colossal. Aboard Ruger's Colossal, the UFO gets bigger on the view screen. The prey is heading straight toward us. It is but an insect. Destroy it. The pilot holds course grimly. Back on the UFO, Wright swallows nervously as the Colossal fills the view screen. Tharnian firepower howls around it. He dances over to Jar, shivering. Kai follows. What the devil are you doing, man? You're heading straight for it. Most of that ship's turrets are up front. Because it's so big, my gut says it's going to be slow to turn. Your gut? You're sticking our lives on a hunch. It's what I do. Mastodon, how long? I've nearly got it. Another two minutes. Kai watches Jar, goes to speak, and stops himself. He and Wright both stand back, lost in the view screen. In space, the UFO hurtles towards the Tharnian ship. Now aboard Ruger's Colossal, Vidarok ducks as the UFO flies towards the view screen. It diverts at the last second. Report! Flown right by us. Rear cannons are firing. They have missed. Turn, pursue, and destroy. The pilot touches some controls. Back on the UFO, Wright slaps Jar on the back. Woohoo! Wright shakes his fist at the Tharnian ship. Same to you with brass knobs on, you Praetorian cats. Mastodon, how long? I'm done. Warp engine's back online. Kai and Wright both smile. Jar's too tense to consider such a luxury. In space, the Colossal completes the turn and fires fury. The UFO goes to warp, flash, and vanishes. Later, aboard the UFO, Jar sits on a synthetic cherrywood chair, watching stars through a ten-foot window. Kai looks up at a magnificent chandelier with rosette details. Benson beeps and chirps. Kai reaches for a pewter mug from a marble-surfaced coffee table. Steam rises from the mug as he sips. I don't think Forbes was telling the truth. Third system war, galactic order, you? I mean, come on, it's science fiction, right? I wish it was. I can't think of that now. I've got to find Ganna first. She's become the blood that runs through my veins. No, that's a virus. Benson whistles. I don't want to join any damn guild. We can take this ship and keep searching for her. Right now, we have no idea where she is. Besides, these pirates rescued us and they're offering us a fresh start. Do you always give up on people so easily? Yourself included? Jar pulls out his blaster, but doesn't point it at Kai. I'm taking this ship with or without you. Benson beeps in alarm and whizzes from the room. He crashes into Mastodon, who enters and pulls a plug on the droid. Its lights dim with a dull surge. Don't want our little friend reporting your words to Wright, do we? How long have you been listening? Long enough. I suggest you put that thing away, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a coward. If you try to take this ship, you'll never find your companion. Jar puts the blaster away. I will find her. Well, I don't doubt it. Such impetus, illogical actions are in your blood. Now, why would you say a thing like that? Because I feel you are known to me. I flew with Moroz, your great-grandfather, back in the Targ skirmishes. 
Jar stands. Kai sighs relief. He puts a hand in his pocket. You've got my attention. I never expected to encounter his seed, despite the prophecy. Prophecy? About him? Jar? Oh, yes. Moreau's met and rose against the Tharnians, and against all odds, he slew thousands of them. They got him in the end, but he left the prophecy they fear to this day. Jar grasps his pendant. When Rugar saw this, my family crest, he mentioned a prophecy. Yes, it goes like this. My seed shall finish what I have started. Brother will kill brother in bloodlust for his life, yet he will prevail in the day of reckoning. Revenge. He wanted revenge on them. The motive is not as important as the means. Me. I'm the means. The seed. But how? How can I even scratch the Tharni in the Empire? Mastodon spreads his hands, indicating he doesn't know. Elsewhere, on the planet Tharnia, the Tharnian capital bustles. Giant towers gleam. Crude metals have formed grand things. Residential pagodas, side by side, are stacked on top of each other. One is grander than the rest, with a spire stretching towards the heavens. Inside Rugor's home, Carthurg, a young Tharnian child, claws at Rugor. Rugor gently pins him to the floor with one claw. Carthurg laughs at this. Rugor's helmet lies nearby. A photo of a female Tharnian hangs on the wall. She is savage, yet has softness. As you learn more of our empire, you will understand the importance of family. You say so, Father. When you take your Geshana and have a family of your own, they must become your world. I will never take a Geshana. Hmm. Perhaps you cannot see the day, but it will come. As will the day when we punish these humans. Father, why do we hate humans so? Rugor smiles, revealing razor-like teeth. They are insidious. Carther looks up at his father, blankly. They once ate their fellow urchins. Carther swallows. I'm glad I'm not a human. It is best we purge them. <clears throat> Indeed. Now go, study. You must be strong, little one. Carther nods. Runs along and exits. Rugor looks at the photo, and sadness clouds his eyes. We must both be strong. His head falls. Inside the base on Tharnia, Rugor is dressed in full battle armor, walks into Emperor Zago's ornate throne room. Crimson flags and crests surround them. Zago is seated on a throne. Tharnian guards stand nearby. Zago watches Rugor coolly. Older and smaller than Rugor, his strong gaze intensifies. Robed in royal purple, he frowns. Rugor climbs the marble step set and bows when he reaches the top. My emperor, most pilots would die before ejecting. I was denied this honor. The seed of Moro is ejected and I had to pursue him. <laughs> Only to have him slip from your grasp once more. The empire is concerned that Jar intends to fulfill the prophecy. I share his concern. He will take my flagship and crew and the strongest fighter we have, a second-generation prototype. Rugor bows. I will not fail you again. Rugor turns to leave. Zago holds up a claw. Rumors that the Cerulean Legion can mask their ships concern me, and now they have raised their nemesis against us. Crush them! Rugor snaps his jaw and nods. Elsewhere in space, outside Waktar Station, the UFO approaches a black mammoth space station. Giant wheel-like structures and habitat modules jut out from the superstructure. Enough lights blaze to please the fussiest moth. Aboard the UFO, Waktar Station spins slowly on the viewscreen. Aha! Gentlemen, I present to you Waktar Station, the finest ever built. It's the prettiest thing I've seen in a while. Speaking of pretty, there are a woman here, right? My droids didn't tickle your fancy, old boy. They tickle me more than that, but... I also dig the real woman with a piercing or two. Did you know that back on Earth... Kai whispers something in Wright's ear. They pierce those too. Wouldn't that hurt? Jar shakes his head. Say, are you telling me the truth or are you trying to extract the mic? Inside Waktar Station's docking bay. Ground crews, human and otherwise, scramble to work on several ships, all of them black, coming into land. Jar, Kai, Benson, and Wright exit the UFO, which is clamped and being checked over. Master Don hovers by the exit. Straight on to the next mission for me. I'm sure we'll meet again. 
Jar pats his shoulder. I hope so. I'd like to talk again. In the background, Benson chirps and wheels away from the group, and crashes into a wall. A mechanic attends him. Follow me, chaps. I'll take you to meet the war general. I normally salute him with two fingers, but I'd suggest you keep it rather more formal. His sister Vegas really rules the roost around here, but no one... Well, no one has the heart to tell her poor old Talbot. Mastodon watches the group walk away. He then operates a handheld communicator. Vegas's face appears. Yes? Your merchandise has arrived. Moments later, Wright, Jar, and Kai stride through a series of corridors. Various aliens brush past them. A door opens, and a Tharnian, dressed in neutral colors, steps through. Jar's hand goes inside his jacket. What the... Oh, it's quite all right. This one's on our side. Meet Rushnak, who left his dictatorship to join our democracy. Rushnak, short and weasel-like, is surprised. Jar removes his hand from his jacket. Captain Jar, it's fortunate for you I am no longer a part of the Tharnian Empire. And for you. I would have dropped you where you stand. Rushnak growls and marches away stridently. Do come along. Wright strides away, whistling a well-known tune. Deep inside Waktar Station, the war room. Jar stands in a room full of maps, models, and opulence. Dozens of projections relay information. 3D holograms depict various activities occurring around the station. Talbot, 60s, is an unsightly, bulky man with wisps of white hair. He is hunched over a tiny desk full of star charts. A small set of eyes peer suspiciously through a puffy face. His voice is squeaky. Another greenhorn for the grinder, eh? Welcome aboard, Jar. Now there's only one rule here, I'm your god. You'll find I'm more upfront than your last employers, the United Planets. Jar sits before Talbot, cautiously. So you think the UP has a hidden agenda? They profess peace. They say peace. I say pieces. Let me show you something. Talbot operates a switch, and a three-dimensional display appears between them. Nearly 200 planets are visible. 192 members of the United Planets? 185 of the planets turn red. Seven remain green. Only seven worlds will resist the United Planets' scheme for galactic unification. Tharnia is the biggest threat to their plan. But the UP voted. They're not going to attack Tharnia. Yet, rumors that the Tharnian Empire's enemy, the Cerulean Legion, are preparing a strike abound. How convenient for the United Planets. Hmm? Jar frowns, troubled. Plan B. I think I'm starting to get it. Uh, There's something else. I've lost someone. She had her freedom taken from her. I need your help to find her. (laughs) My help? You fool! I own you, body and soul. You used to fight as part of the war on political violence. You now fly for the taking of plunder under pirate colors. Hmm. My colors! Now go, appease your god! Jar glares at Talbot. Elsewhere, back aboard the warmonger, inside the cells. Ganna, lying on a bunk, wakes to see Vegas approaching. An energy field between them shimmers. Escape from the cell is impossible. I bring glad tidings. Jar is safe and not far from here. Soon I shall bring him aboard, and then we are ready to begin. Ganna stands and approaches Vegas. Lead Jar out of this. If there's a problem, take it up with me. Vegas snaps her fingers and the energy field buzzes and vanishes. She steps closer, now face to face with Ganna. She seizes her ponytail and pulls her head back. You wouldn't last more than a minute. Ganna spits in Vegas's face, but Roulette's sword flashes and intercepts the saliva. The blade moves from a defensive position and rests below Ganna's throat. Vegas licks the side of Ganna's face. She flinches. Now on Waktar Station inside Jar's quarters. Jar trudges through the door, which slides shut behind him. He throws off his jacket and curses. He walks through his pad, surveying a kitchen with food dispenser, a lounge hosting a communication system, and a recreational screen. He powers a remote, then flicks between movies and a violent future sport. He finds a news channel. Ryder is on screen. He wears a conservative jacket with wide lapels and a colorful butterfly bow tie. Confirm that reclaiming Callan was still Earth's long-term objective. Speaking from Rockefeller Piazza, the president advised that he would continue to stand against the Alliance of Inquity. Yesterday, hundreds of thousands of anti-war protesters marched through Manhattan. 
We never learn. He turns it off as a bleary-eyed Kai appears on another screen, chocolate on the side of his mouth. How are you finding your new pad? Mine's got a mini bar. Jar's expression is deadpan. They're not going to help us find Gamma. Oh, then you need to help yourself. Uh, meet me in the casino in five. Kai's image vanishes. Jar ponders. Later, in the Waktar Station Casino, flashing lights and every scam known to man fill the casino. Big wheels spin. Addicted robots play futuristic slot machines alongside humans and creatures. Kai spots Jar walking in and waves him over. Kai sits before a massive window and grips a red control stick fervently. This better be good. Oh, it's better than good. You found a way to get Ganna back? I found a way to get me a ship. Maybe it's my turn to be the hero. Kai gestures towards the window. Jar looks out and sees dozens of ships encased in bubbles resting atop each other in a hangar. A giant claw hangs from the ceiling. It's a game of chance. All the credits I have in the universe, plus my gold and bitcoin, are required for just one go. But that's all we need. You're not serious. Am I talking to Kai or the minibar? Kai points to a fierce-looking fighter. See that ship? Watch and learn. <clears throat> Don't do this. You dare. Kai swipes a card, and a light on the stick changes from red to green. Has already given up on me. It's all or nothing. The lever moves about and hovers over the fierce spider. Kai hits a button. The claw drops, grabs the bubble, pulls it up. Yeah, baby! Kai watches the ship in the bubble rise, mouth agape. People, creatures, and robots gather around excitedly. Chatter fills the casino. It's working! The claw rises with the ship, then falls open, and the ship and bubble fall. The claw snags another bubble with a tiny rust bucket of a ship inside and pulls it out of the hangar. Those gathered around laugh. Kai drops his head. Ah, nuts. Later on Waktar Station in Wright's office. Wright is seated behind a cluttered mahogany desk. He makes notes via a 3D gizmo. Rushnak throws the door open and stomps in. Wright looks at him for a second, then back to his notes. Everything all right, Rushnak? It will be. My next destination is to be Relos. Assign me a mission there. There's nothing here at the moment. The human named Jar will accompany me. Wright looks up. What the dickens are you harping on about? He hasn't even been allocated a ship yet. Jar and I will be assigned to a mission bound for Relos. Start preparing for it now. Wright stands, face flushed with anger. He throws his cane down on the desk and marches over to Rushnak. He removes a glove and slaps Rushnak's face with it. How dare you? I challenge you to blasters at dawn via my robot, of course. A human form robot steps forward, metal gleaming. It draws two blasters at the speed of light, spins them with precision, pretends to blow the barrel of one, then holsters them. It then returns to the niche. Thank you, Egbert. He's never lost, so I suggest you get your affairs in order. Rushnak throws a bundle of credits on the desk. Twenty thousand credits, another thirty when it's done. Wright cannot take his eyes off the credits. Vegas wants Jaw for something. Defying her like this could cost me. They say she enjoys inflicting pain as much as she delights in experiencing it. Wright snatches the credits as his cheek twitches. But then, I always was a gambler. Rushnak nods knowingly. On Waktar Station, inside Hangar 1. Jar, Kai, and Wright stand looking up at a black ship. Resembling an angry hornet with a wingspan of 200 feet, this ship is one mean ombre. An even deadlier black, wasp-like ship sits next to it. Wright points to the Hornet. This is your new ship. It's a fast courier that can also fight. You'll be trained how to fly her by day with theory at night, while you sleep. Welcome to the world of 24-7 learning. Kai nods approval at the Wasp ship. I can't learn when I dream. Your dreams will be controlled by a direct uplink to your cerebral cortex. Controlled dreams? I'll have some foxy ladies in mind, if you please. For educational purposes, of course. My dear boy, the object is to teach, not titillate. You want me to pay attention or not? Wright smiles nervously. Shortly after, inside Wright's office, Jar stands before Wright and Rushnak with a frown. I recall you saying the choice of mission would be mine. You've done all the easy stuff, like satellite runs. Now it's time for a real mission. What mission? I don't want... It's a benevolent one. Simply deliver policy links to Ralos. 
an impoverished world, then return. Wright smiles insincerely. What's he doing here? Although the risks are minimal, I'll be escorting you, just in case. You? <laughs> no way, no how. You'll fly as ordered, primate. Go to blazes. If we go out there together, only one of us will return. Rushnak growls. There's no room for xenophobia aboard the station, my good man. You simply must fly, lest I have you flogged. Hmm? Jar and Rushnak fume, eyes locked on each other. On Waktar Station, inside Hangar 2... Jar advances on his signet, kicking a barrel on his way past. Rushnak's ship, a small black fighter, rests nearby. Rushnak watches Jar as he passes. Rushnak is dressed in full battle armor and is eager to leave. Aboard the signet ship, Jar walks onto the bridge. Lights from every color of the rainbow provide intermittent illumination. He stops before a set of crates. Seedlings, huh? Jar pulls out his blaster. Zap! A hole appears in one of the crates. It's empty. He smiles wryly. Moments later, in Hangar 2, Jar approaches Rushnak with purpose. Kai follows. I just came to say good luck. And not that you need it. You'll somehow do that hero shit again. Jar ignores Kai and lines up Rushnak. I didn't think Tharnians understood benevolence. We don't. We understand credits. I don't just smell a rat. I've got a whiff of the whole pack. Get in my ship. Jar produces the blaster and trains it on Rushnak. What, what, what the frack? Have you lost your mind? Maybe. Move it. I do not have time for games, Captain. You can walk into my ship of your own accord, or I can drag your lifeless corpse aboard. Rushnak snarls and then walks to the signet. Jar fixes his eyes on Kai. You in or out? Kai fixes Jar with an angry stare and clenches his fists. Aboard the signet. Rushnak enters the flight deck. Jar follows, blaster still out. Jar indicates the captain's chair. Take a seat. Rushnak sits. Kai enters, berating himself. Computer, restrain intruder. Hiss. Steel tubes snake out to restrain Rushnak. Rushnak growls and glares at Jar. What is the meaning of this? You tell me. You're setting me up for something. I'm going to find out what, and mark my words, you will pay a price. Kai pulls open a panel and puts his boot through it several times. Jar ducks as sparks fly. I've taken out the comm, just in case he tries to signal for help. He's restrained. Was that really necessary? Maybe not, but I love wrecking shit. Jar sighs and turns to Rushnak, his eyes narrow. Elsewhere... The warmonger, a black, vast battlecruiser riddled with gun turrets, glides through space. Hundreds of other assorted ships sail with it. Aboard the warmonger, arms folded, Roulette stands beside Vegas on the flight deck. Other crew members are operating different stations on the flight deck. They're after Jar. Rushnak is leading him into a trap. I've gone to too much trouble to lose him now. Notify the flotilla. We're moving. Vegas storms around the flight deck produces a whip, then cracks it. Crew members flinch. Meanwhile, the Signet and the Lancer burn through space. Aboard the Lancer ship, Jar sits in front with Kai behind. The cockpit offers a grand view of space. Kai rocks his head in time to a loud, fast tune. Jar looks annoyed and makes a gesture that stops the music. Do you think a galactic order would be a good thing? If that's what the United Planets truly want? I'm starting to buy this shit. To me, it sounds like a chance for Earth to stamp its will on the universe. There goes freedom. The two are silent for a moment. Yeah. Seems to me the UP use their covert violence as a means to their peaceful ends. How far will they go this time? How far will they go? What about you? I'm here because I'm insane, clearly, but next stop, I'm out of here. Gonna get my own ship and fly for the pirates. Jar nods and raises his voice. Probably more credits for you flying as a thief or a murderer than trying to rescue a friend. Don't get mad at me because I don't have your scruples. That shit gets you killed. The breeze is blowing and it's time to jump aboard. Jar notices something on the scanner. Right now the breeze is taking us into trouble. We've got company. Kai leans across to check the scanner. In space, near the planet Relos. The Lancer and Signet approach Relos. Rugor's Colossal emerges from the dark side of the planet. 
Inside the signet, Rushnak struggles against his bonds, eyes lost in the view screen. He snaps the steel tubes with a howl and takes the controls. Now back aboard the Lancer, Jar watches the Colossal close in. And the trap is sprung. Kai cranes his neck around and sights the Tharnian behemoth. The signet's turning around to engage. Rushnak's broken free. This time we really are screwed. Jar watches the signet close and fire. He turns the ship around to flee. The signet fires and the lancer dodges. The colossal continues to close. The lancer takes a hit and its shields buckle. The ship slows down. Rushnak's signet closes for the kill. Inside the lancer, Jar fights to get the damage under control. Game over. Thanks for fracking up my life. Don't thank me just yet. Kai curses. Aboard Rugor's Colossal, Rugor watches the ship's fight. Other Tharnians work at various stations. Brul, a Tharnian pilot, signals him. Commander, the seed of Morose has detected us. He's firing on Rushnak. Destroy him. Rugor snarls. Hum, the weapons array on the Colossal lights up menacingly. Aboard the Signet, Rushnak notices the Grey Colossal bearing down on him. No, Rugor, it is I. I am in Jar's ship computer. Oh, open a channel. Rushnak looks down at the broken communication equipment, then back to the view screen in dread. Sizzle. A ruby beam drills right through the signet. Boom. The signet explodes and debris scatters. The lancer turns away. The colossal drifts in space. The weapons array dims. Aboard the lancer, Jar has the damage under control. God, we're alive! We're alive! How the frack? The colossal must have known the signet was my ship. They couldn't have known Rushnuk was on board. They were trying to kill me. So what's new? Everyone wants, everyone wants you dead. Hell, even I do sometimes. Jar raises an eyebrow. Kai shrugs his shoulders. Meanwhile, aboard Rugor's Colossal, Rugor watches the Lancer depart. Rushnak was supposed to dock. Scan his ship. Perhaps it has sustained too much damage to land. Scanning now. Commander, I read two human life signs. No Tharnians on board. Holds on it at once. Fire as soon as we have it in range. Rugor lets out a low growl. The Colossal powers engines and closes on the Lancer. Back aboard the Lancer, Jar watches the scanner. It's coming after us. They realize we aren't on the signet. The damaged engine. I can't outrun it. Now what? Kai watches the weapons array on the Colossal hum to life. The ship closes. Jar stares at the screen. The Colossal opens fire. The Lancer jinx and survives. The Colossal fires. The Lancer weaves. Two express fighters appear and open fire on the Colossal. The Colossal returns fire and, boom, destroys one of the new arrivals. Aboard Ruger's Colossal. Ruger watches as dozens of ships appear on his scanner. A fleet closes. Ships of all classes, many without standard signatures. Pirates. Scum of the galaxy. We must retreat or be overwhelmed. Ruger snarls with frustration. He watches the Lancer fly towards the incoming pirates. Retreat. Lay down defensive fire if any more pirates come in rage. You defer your death for the last time, Jar. Rugor puffs himself up. In space, still outside Relos. The warmonger and fleet close as the Colossal retreats. The two ships close on Jar's Lancer and fire at it. Aboard the Lancer, Jar pushes the control stick left, then down, as a series of explosions appear where his ship had been only a moment ago. Two ships buzz him. Now they're fighting over who gets to kill you. I kind of get that. From the wolf's paw into the lion's mouth. Jar dodges incoming fire. Crackle. Rushnak, you have cost me more dearly than you can imagine. For ruining my plans, you shall die here. Rushnak, this is Jar. Repeat, this is Jar. Jar heaves the control stick right, and the Lancer survives more near misses. Aboard the warmonger, Vegas leans back in her chair and smiles. The cat that's caught the mouse. Hold your fire! My, my, how you do cling to life, Captain. We thought you, we thought you were Rushnak. I swapped ships. He intended to trap me. What do you intend? Impure delight. She licks her lips. Moments later... The Lancer enters one of the Warmonger's launch bays. Two fighters follow it in. Shortly after, aboard the Warmonger, Jar and Kai stand before Vegas on the flight deck. Other crew offer glances and remain at their stations. 
The view screen displays hundreds of distant stars. Vegas circles Jar. She carries a whip and a saucy smile. I am Vegas, the one who arranged your rescue from Dagash and saved you from that nasty colossal. You owe me your life, it seems. We don't owe you anything, woman. You just open fired on us out there. A macho soldier. Boring. Take him away. No, wait a second. Get your hands off me! He won't be harmed. Not yet, at least. Kai is led away. He flips Vegas the bird on his way past. Remarkable. Another Tharnian bites the dust and his own kind pull the trigger. Perhaps I can arrange a forum for you to show me some of your other tricks. I don't think I'd survive it. Why am I here? Vegas, disappointed, points to a view screen which displays an angry crimson red planet. Very well. Business before pleasure, then. You will destroy the Tharnian homeworld for me. With their navy engaged holding Kellen, they're vulnerable. I have a vast fleet that awaits a leader. Why? Why would I? Vegas holds the whip to her face and smiles. Because it pleases me, and I like to be pleased. Not enough. Vegas frowns. Her outfit shimmers as she appears dressed as a provocatively clad nurse. Perhaps this is more to your liking? Uh, no. I'm fine. Where was I? Why? Because you want to. Because your great-grandfather prophesied you would. Because their genus seek only war. Shall I keep going? You need a scapegoat. You do have motive and opportunity. The Cerulean Legion offer you the means. Why? Why did the Legion want Tharnia destroyed? Vegas's outfit shimmers and changes again. She's now dressed as a sexy cheerleader, complete with pigtails and pom-poms. So many questions. I could make you take your, your clothes, you know. Jar does a double take and blinks, forcing his mind to focus. Um, the Legion are Tharnians, too. Have they considered the prophecy they're cashing in on applies to them as well? Vegas strokes Jar's forehead. He flinches slightly. They have. No one knows where to find the hidden moon, Ceruleus. You included. They're perfectly safe. Nothing in this universe is safe. Now I know what Plan B is. And I do have a score to settle with the Tharnians. Yet, if I refuse... Vegas smiles coldly and raises an eyebrow. Her outfit shimmers and she's back in the leather trench coat. She cracks her whip. Later, outside the cells, Vegas stands near a hexagonal door. Jar stands alongside him. A one-sided viewing pane opens. Ghana sits inside a cell, contemplating escape. Ghana! Jar runs to the door, trying to open it. He places his hand on the pane. She can't hear you, and you can't touch her. Ever again. Unless you agree to lead the attack. Jar watches Ghana lovingly. This isn't about you, me, or even the Cerulean Legion. We're all pawns in a much bigger game. If someone's funding the Cerulean Legion, who in turn are funding me, what of it? So long as there's a payday. He turns back to Vegas. His eyes are defiant. That someone is the United Planets. We could stand against them. My fleet, not yours. No, you will fly for me, and if you do betray me, or if you fail, I'll hand your beloved over to my band of pirates, who will do awful pirate-like things to her. If I accept, I can never return to her. If you refuse, she dies. So, do you love her, or is it just a flame? Jar's defiant gaze drops to the floor. Aboard the warmonger in Jar's cell, Jar sits on a sleek bunk. He bounces a rubber ball against the wall. Kai sits in the cell opposite. You have to do it. You're supposed to be a soldier, remember? This attack's not sanctioned by the United Planets. Not officially, anyway. Do you know what that means? Jar bounces the ball again. The hero becomes the villain? At least you get to stay alive. There are worse things than dying. Jar's cell door opens, and Mastodon enters. So you're our fearless leader. It all makes sense. You fly for Vegas? I fly for the highest bidder. I'm a pirate, remember? Between our attack force and Legion sabotage, well, Tharnia's doomed. Can you get us out of here? <clears throat> Negative. She would kill me if I tried. Then why are you here? We spoke of your great-grandfather. 
He asked me to deliver a message to his kinfolk. Should we ever meet, and should the time be right? Mastodon tosses Jar a metal cylinder. Jar thumbs the end to release a parchment, an old scroll. So old it was written with ink. Jar puts the scroll down on the bunk and reads the beautifully handwritten words. Nurslip ate Norsum. When the day of reckoning comes, seek that which cannot be seen. No slip ate Norsum. He never said what it meant. Any ideas? Maybe no slip ate Norsum because he had a lisp? I have no time for lisps. Well, it could be a riddle. He was always fond of those. See you out there. Master Don exits. Jar looks at Kai for help. I have no freaking clue. Jar throws the ball in frustration. Later, in space, hiding in an asteroid belt, Jar and Kai sit back to back in the cockpit of a deck jet, a small, black, sleek, dual pilot fighter. Bearing a white skull and crossbones, it looks like a metallic dragonfly. The engines purr, and a quartet of exhausts burn brightly. Maneuvering jets jut out from all sides of the sleek vessel. Strong shields flicker. Weapons include two potent cannons, eight crushing missiles, and two formidable bombs that hang from the wings. Thousands of black ships also lurk in the asteroid belt. Tharnia is in the distance. The warmonger cannot be seen. I'll say one thing. This ship is really something. Kick ass. Yeah, it's dark and musty. Just like a good coffin should be. The deck jet emerges from the asteroid belt and advances. Other ships follow. It's showtime. Elsewhere on Tharnia, inside the base. Emperor Zago sits on his throne, chin in his claws. Opafu, the Tharnian guard, rushes in. The Cerulean Legion has spoken. A fleet has emerged from within the Kyler trainer belt. Jar commands it. So it begins. We also have reports of critical power failures throughout the Cork cities. Sabotage! Send out ships to meet this fleet. Recall our navy from Callan. If we recall our navy, the humans will reclaim Callan once more. Our homeworld must survive. I bow to your wisdom, my emperor. It shall be done. Zago's eyes narrow. Back in space, now approaching Tharnia. Jar's deck jet is followed by his fleet. Some of the ships are painted as angry animals. A shark, a tiger, and a crocodile. To add to their menace. Another ship has rings orbiting it, while another is tied to a living, dragon-like creature which pulls it through space. The ships carry massive payloads. Inside the deck jet, Jar has a steady hand on the control stick. Tharnia looms on the view screen. He takes his hand off the stick and takes a deep breath. He looks back over his shoulder. He holds out his palm, blinks, and a 3D image of Ghana appears. His eyes soften. He looks at Tharnia again and sighs. He blows the image and it disappears. His face hardens and he takes the stick. Conscience override engaged. Check. Nightmares forever invited. Check. You think too much. Come on, let's blow some shit up. Jar takes his hand off the control stick. His face screws up. He fights back emotion. His hand trembles as it returns to the stick. In space, approaching Tharnia. Rumble. Thousands of gray mercers, lancers, colossals, cruisers, and other Tharnian ships accelerate. Jar's fleet approaches in the distance. Zap! Zoom! The Tharnian colossals surge forward and open fire. Boom! Explosions as space is ablaze. Jar's deck jet roars towards a Tharnian mercer. The mercer stays on course and both ships fire. Beams sizzle. Elsewhere, inside Rugor's colossal. Rugor studies a series of charts as Dekondos approaches. Dekondos is a typical Tharnian, though shorter than Rugor. I bring urgent news. The homeworld is under attack. By whom? The human known as Jar and a massive rogue fleet. Rugor roars. Maximum speed. We must join our brothers in battle. Alas, time is against us. We are still two days away from Tharnia. We may be, but I am not. My prototype Mercer will deliver the battle to me in moments. Rugor's eyes twinkle with hope. Moments later, roar, Rugor's tinted gray and white Mertzer storms away from the Colossal at high speed. Flash, it is gone. Elsewhere, back aboard the deck jet, blam, Jar pumps the fire button and blasts a Mertzer, which explodes. He grits his teeth and fires at more ships, scoring hits. Jar matches the flight pattern of a squadron of Lancers and fires. 
Kaboom! Explosions ensue. A Mertzer looms behind Jar, and he steers his deck jet away from it. The Mertzer behind Jar fires. Jar's ship jinks and weaves, then returns fire, scoring a hit. Another Mertzer swoops down. The deck jet cuts thrust and fires. Crack! A wing on the Mertzer breaks, and the ship spins away from the battle. Blam! A Tharnian colossal fires with cannons whirring, blasting ships. Four sections open, and mines, each ticking, seek out victims. But boom! The mines explode between high traffic areas and take out multiple targets from Jar's fleet. Missiles are exchanged between the two fleets. Explosions occur on both sides. A massive, a massive spear-shaped ship from Jar's fleet launches a large metal spear. The spear expands. Rotors come out of it and pulverize numerous targets. One spear strikes a colossal, the rotors cutting into the hull. Scrape. Sparks result, and a hole is ripped into the side of the colossal. Nash. The colossal falls away from the battle. Flash. Rugor's Mertzer appears and closes, firing Bedlam, downing five ships. Hum. Four colossals charge weapons, firing disruptors. Clack. Space flashes white. Boom. Jar's fleet has losses. Jar's deck jet climbs, and three Mercers close. A pirate, dart-like fighter picks one of them off. Jar's deck jet turns on the other two and fires. Whack! The deck jet is struck. Jar returns fire at two Mercers, scoring hits on one of them. The other turns away. On board the deck jet, Jar watches alarms flash on the console. Aft shield damaged. Kai, reroute power from the weapons bank to get that shield back up. Kai tears open the bag of food with such ferocity that the contents are thrown all over the cockpit. Damn it, Kai! Focus! Kai keys a panel. I'm on it! I'm on it! If I'm gonna die, I just want at least one more meal. Jar's face is set in stone. Kai grabs as much food as he can and scoffs it. In space, Jar's deck jet speeds after a colossal. Jumbles of ships from his fleet follow. The cannons of the Tharnian behemoth fire frantically. The deck jet turns away from the battle as the colossal bursts into flame and falls away. Rugor's Mertzer destroys three allied ships. He then attacks a transport. The transport's cannons spin wildly in their turrets as the Mertzer scores hits on the bridge. Whirr, lights dim as the transport spins off course. Inside Rugor's Mertzer, he snarls and looks left to right. Where are you, Jar? Show yourself and die! Stars blur. Jar dodges beams from four Mertzers on his tail. Blam! The deck jet takes a hit. Shields flash and metal sizzles. Jar is wide-eyed and frantic. Aft shield failed, attempting to restore. Minor hull breach has been repaired. Come on! Jar pushes the stick and the ship turns. Jar's deck jet swings around. Crackle, he destroys two Mercers closing on an ally. The ally, Mastodon's ship, dips its wings in thanks before returning to the fray. A second wave of Tharnians close. A monstrous ship from Jar's fleet advances. It has a massive metal platform attached. At the end of the platform, an immense sphere, swinging hypnotically, glows white-hot and hisses with energy. Sputters, zap! The sphere pulls dozens of hapless Tharnian fighters into it, which are annihilated on contact. It's like a big bug zapper. A Mertzer closes on the monstrous ship, which fires and misses. It flies straight into the ship. Boom! A massive explosion results, and the monstrous ship falls from the melee. Jar's ship turns to meet a squadron of Tharnian Mertzers head-on. The deck jet's weapons blaze. Boom! Two of the four Mertzers explode. Jar chases Rugor's tinted gray and white Mertzer. They jostle. Rugor weaves a skillful line turns and flies straight at Jar and fires. Jar returns fire as his ship takes hits and shudders, shields wavering. This one's good. Port cannon offline. Firepower halved? That's just great. Jar pulls back on the control stick. The Mertzer turns to meet him and launches a missile to buttonhole him. Aboard Rugor's Mertzer, Rugor snarls at Jar's ship as his missile closes on it. Good, but not good enough. Rugor's ship closes. The missile races after the desk jet. Jar is on edge. Beads of sweat cascade down his forehead. He wipes his eyes. Kai watches a missile close and is transfixed by the projectile of doom. Missile on our six. 
Big time. I see it. Jar pushes at the controls. Whoosh. Jar turns his deck jet in a tight arc. The missile closes, then misses, slamming into another member of Vegas's fleet. The deck jet turns and pursues Ruger's Mertzer. Jar nearly has it in range as it veers away. Jar eases the control stick right, keeping the Mertzer in his sights. Take down time. The Mertzer spins away sharply. Rugor observes Jar on his tail. You cannot prevail against me. Rugor calmly makes an adjustment. The deck jet matches the Mertzer's course. Zap! The Mertzer destroys another two allies. Jar abandons the chase as a lancer above fires at his, desk, at his deck jet. He slows, banks, and unleashes fury at the lancer. Boom! Shakalak! The lancer explodes. Jar chases Rugor as the Tharnian destroys another ally. The Mertzer banks, jinx, and spins to shake Jar. Jar manages to half smile. I've got you now. Do it, for frack's sake! Jar fires. The deck jet follows through debris and fires. Rugor's Mertzer tries to avert course, but is too slow. Hull blazing, the Mertzer spins out of control. Jar follows the Mertzer away from the battle. Jar keeps his ship steady, Rugor in his sights. He prepares to fire. You fly well, Jar, for it is surely you. You have become the Legion's hand. Do their bidding. Whatever you say, just keep still so I can blast you. We conquer, but we do not slay all. There are limits on what we take. Those limits are about to get smaller. You think we are worse than them? The Legion has murdered over 30 million Tharnian civilians in a fashion more brutal than you can imagine. Jar fires at the Mertzer, but misses. The Mertzer is repairing itself rapidly. Not buying it. Beep. Target lock. Jar's thumb hovers over the fire button. Why don't you eject? His ship's regenerating. Quick, blast the damn iguana. My life capsule is damaged beyond repair. You may kill me, but my son will avenge my death. You have a son? We're about to nuke your world. I, I didn't think your lizards had families. Jar sighs and releases the control stick. You cannot destroy Tharnia. You must not. The deal with the devil's been cut. There's no going back. As for you, take your chances with the void and live with the shame of defeat. Kai spins around and tries to hit the fire button. Jar keeps the stick from him. Are you out of your freaking mind? That's Ruger. No soldier would let this opportunity pass. You hear me? Jar pushes Kai away. Kai hits the canopy in frustration and grunts. Moments later, the deck jet hums and it turns away. Ruger's ship continues to drift. Kai shakes his head. Jar watches the remainder of his fleet assemble around him. Jar's head falls. You didn't kill him. We're not talking insane here, oh no. We're talking sheer broadsided lunacy. There are places for people like you. Did you hear him? He has a son. We're about to murder- Stow it! Everyone's lost someone. You die or we die. Ganna included. Everything all right, Captain? You weren't trying to flee, were you? Let's get this over with. Kai looks at Jar, incredulous. Jar grimaces. In space outside Tharnia, Jar's ship and a throng of allied ships form a defensive frontier and wait above Tharnia. No further ships appear. The very jumble of gleaming ships hover victoriously, daring the planet to challenge them. Jar's deck jet descends. Other ships follow. On the surface of Tharnia, the ships descend to a crater-ridden world covered by a crimson sea. A foreboding storm brews over the sole major continent. The ships strafe the cities, surface cannons billowing return fire. Much of the surface weaponry is inactive, and areas of the cities are in complete darkness. Aboard the deck jet, Jar and Kai watch a city below burn. Jar releases the stick. Burn, baby, burn. We all know the plan. You have your targets. Let's clear the defenses so our team can arrange the breakup party. Understood. Jar fights back in motion. His face softens. The reflections from the fire dance in his eyes. He nods to himself, takes the controls, and his gaze becomes hollow. The deck jet unleashes a missile at a Tharnian city. Other missiles join it and find their target. The allies swarm around the target and then scatter skyward. Sonic boom. The city is vaporized, and a shockwave results. Jar moves his ship away from the aftershock. What are we doing here? 
Spanking the reptiles. Nail that one at 8 o'clock. Jar steers the ship around and blasts an incoming ship out of the sky. Incoming surface to air missiles. Jar steers the ship away from the surface. They are thrown about as the ship takes a hit. Engine damaged, attempting to repair. Jar regains control of the ship. Four missiles close on the deck jet with alacrity. Other allied ships assemble. Missiles churn out from the surface. Several ships take hits. One of the missiles hammers the deck jet and causes it to spiral downwards. The cabin shudders as another missile slams into the deck jet. An explosion results, sending a jagged piece of metal into Jar's shoulder. His flesh sizzles and he cries out in pain. He fights for control as the engines sputter. He grunts and pulls the ship out of a nosedive. Auto dock. A metal cable snakes out from the cockpit and clamps itself to Jar's shoulder. Kai watches on and manages some concern, barely. Come on, keep it together! I don't want to have to take the controls and make you look bad. Jar hits the turbo as missiles swarm around the ship. Frack, they're coming from everywhere. We shouldn't be here. We shouldn't. It's them or it's us. Shields damaged, unable to maintain fluctuation output, disengaging. Come on, Jar, don't lose your sangfroid now. Remember Ghana. I have the tiger, my friend. Don't make me sing it. Jar, expression grim, nods weakly and refocuses. The deck jet levels out and outpaces the missiles. Lights flicker below, a mixture of allied farewells and Tharnian weaponry discharging and being vaporized. The deck jet soars through the sky to a massive, well-armed city. It swoops down to outpace incoming missiles. Jar drops his payload of two bombs over the center of the city. Zoom! The deck jet returns to the firmament at breakneck speed. It hits 10,000 feet and finds cover provided by a layer of allostratus clouds. Jar levels out. Boom! The city below explodes. The deck jet returns to the fracas. Jar puts the deck jet into a dive and the ground looms. He sights a cache of Tharnian weaponry and brings his ship in for the kill at extreme velocity. Kai screams. Jar shakes his head at the sound. Hey, choir boy, knock it off! The view screens a blur. He launches two missiles at the target. The deck jet veers away as the cabin flashes to verify the hit. Jar looks down. Fires ablaze as far as the eye can see. He releases the control stick and his head falls. He struggles to comprehend the carnage all around him. He glares coldly at his own reflection in the cockpit. Whew, I'd say we're done here. The transports are coming in to do their thing. <clears throat> hey, tune in. Let's get the frack out of here. Jar steers the ship skyward as though on autopilot. He keeps his cold eyes on his reflection the whole time. On the surface of Tharnia, Piarn stands outside his home and watches the sky as a huge transport flies overhead. Tharnians all around him run in panic and confusion. Nearby buildings burn and bodies lay nearby. Father, where are you? He shields his eyes as a blinding flash rips across the sky. In space outside Tharnia, Jar's deck jet pulls away from Tharnia. Dozens of ships follow, including transports. Kaboom! Kaboom! A white ring blazes around Tharnia, and the planet is blown to fragments. Everything around the ship goes white for several moments. Jar and Kai look out from the cockpit and watch the debris. Jar frowns, head slumping forward. Kai grins. It's finished. Yeah! The ship slows. Jar mumbles to himself. He looks at the screen, which displays the words... No lisp eight norsim. No lisp eight norsim. When the day of reckoning comes, seek that which cannot be seen. This is the day of reckoning. We've got to figure it out. If we go back, we're as good as dead. So, fearless leader, we survive. So we do. Did my great grandfather say anything else to you apart from the message? Nope. There must be something. Well, he said he left Earth because he felt more like a number than a name. Not helping. Wait, he did say something about the key. What was it? Uh, Uzo is the key? That's the end. U-Z-O, then turn it back? Thanks. A riddle to solve a riddle. There's a crackle and Mastodon is gone. Jar remains in thought. Kai rips open a sealed cup of water. Most of it lands on Jar. He fires Kai a glare. What? Okay. Computer, add the word Uzo. 
to the end. A 3D holographic image displays No Lisp 8 Norsim Uzo. No Lisp 8 Norsim Uzo. Add to the end. Turn the key backwards. Computer, display the words backwards. The image displays Ozu Micron Eta Cylons. Jar scratches his head. Felt more like a number. Maybe it's not a name. Maybe it's a number, but it still doesn't make sense. Time to head back, Jar. Vegas will be waiting. Jar's face falls into his hands. He looks desperately at Kai, who shrugs his shoulders. It's all Greek to me, then. Jar mulls over Kai's words, then his eyes widen. Maybe that's it. <clears throat> U-Z-O. <laughs> Add to the end. The end of each word. Computer, add the letters of the first word to the end of the next three words, then delete the first word. The image displays nolipsu ates norsimo. Turn the key backwards. Computer, now display the words backwards and display any known numerical values from the Greek language. The image displays omicron, 70, zeta, 7, upsilon, 400. You're right. It is Greek. I told you, I'm a freaking genius. 707400. But what does it mean? A blast strikes the ship, causing it to rock. Move it, the next shot won't be a warning. Jar shakes his head. He looks down at another display. The coordinates read 004659. Turn the key backwards. Again, 004707. They're coordinates. They're sector coordinates. We're right on top of them. Blast them. Blast empty space. How will that help? Kai glares at Jar. Got a better idea? You're here. Let's do this. Jar takes the controls. The deck jet changes course. The fleet slows. Jar checks the coordinates again. The display reads 004688. Where are you going? We have one more target. Everyone is to fire at coordinates 004707. This wasn't part of the plan. Vegas made me the skipper. Follow my orders or face her wrath when we return. Jar holds the ship's course. Moments later, hundreds of ships fire. One shot from the deck jet causes a section of space to shimmer. The deck jet pounds that section of space and other ships chime in. Just then, Jar watches a small moon decloak before him. He fires at it. I don't believe it. Like a rising sun, there it is, the legendary moon Cerulus. It does exist. If the Cerulean Legion is the United Planet's hand, let's see how they like it when I cut it off. Hey, Mastodon, why are you helping us? Morose was like a father to me. I never truly recovered from his death. Jar nods, understanding. The fleet fires at the moon, causing ripples throughout space. The cloak fails, and now it's fully visible. Space around the moon shimmers. Blue ships from the Cerulean Legion decloak and fire on the incoming fleet. Boom! Jar shields his eyes as the ship next to him explodes. They're firing! Don't go for the ships, go after the moon! Jar puts on his game face. Moments later, in space, near Cerulus. More blue cerulean vessels decloak and open fire on Jar's fleet. Jar's ship speeds by them, and two turn in pursuit. He roars into the planet's atmosphere and makes for a canyon in the center of the moon. Jar activates a targeting scanner and searches for the weakest part of the surface. Kai, tag the lowest part of that canyon on my scanner. Kai glares at Jar. He nods and feels useful. Okay. Locked in. ETA one minute, ten seconds. The deck jet zips towards the center of the canyon. Two Cerulean ships follow and fire. Boom. One of the ships crashes into the canyon wall and explodes. Zap. Zap. The other ships fire at Jar's deck jet again. Inside the ship, Jar wrestles with the controls as he tries to shake the Cerulean ship. Come on. Shake it and get in the position to strike. You've got 30 seconds or you won't get another shot. Jar nods and pulls back on the stick. The deck jet loops and appears behind the Cerulean fighter. The ship starts to cloak. blam a Jar nails it. He looks at Kai, eyes bloodshot. How long? Eight seconds. Go, go, go! Jar prepares to fire. Great granddad, this one's for you. Jar hits the button. 
The deck jet launches a missile and soars skyward. The moon has already taken heavy damage, and still pirates bombard it. Rumble, Jar looks back towards the sound. Get out of here, everyone. She's going to blow. Jar takes the controls. Kai watches on, nervous as hell. The remainder of Jar's fleet races after him. Crack! The moon crumbles and begins to disintegrate. Flash! Boom shot shoom! It explodes, hurtling fragments through space. There's one hell of an aftershock. That was beautiful. The deck jet and thirty odd ships from Jar's fleet slow. Fifty odd cerulean ships decloak before them. Jar looks vexed as fifty odd ships loom on the view screen. Oh, frack, oh mama. Now what, Captain? Do we open fire? Hold off. Let them make the first move. Jar and Kai fix their gaze on the view screen. The Cerulean fleet and the pirate fleet square off against each other. No shots are exchanged. The Cerulean ships shimmer and vanish. Jar waits for the battle to start. Nothing. <laughs> they know it's over. They've lost. <sighs> Let's head back and face the music. Stars rush by the cockpit as Jar maneuvers the ship on a return course. Head back? Vegas isn't going to let us live. Let's make a run for it. You'd leave Ghana just like that? No point in joining her. Vegas will kill us all. You know that. Maybe we can get help and launch a rescue operation. Fleeing's not an option. Period. Kai well, snarls once more. Well, maybe you're not calling the shots anymore, huh? Maybe I unstrap myself and we go toe to toe. I got no plans on dying, you hear me? Kai, listen to me. We're surrounded by pirates. We have a damaged engine. Even if you wanted to make a run for it, they'd get you. Think about it. Kai watches the stars roll by and nods slowly. I guess you can't fight your way out of every corner. Damn it! Jar watches the stars and is then lost in his own sorrow. Kai, unseen by Jar, holds out his hand. A 3D hologram of Udaya appears in his palm. His face drops. He blows it, and it slowly dissolves. The great burden of life is to try and keep your higher self in command. I failed. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. We're still in the game. Jar looks out into space, his mind as adrift as the ship. Later, back in the warmonger's docking bay, Kai walks quickly, as though to get away from Jar. Pirates follow, keeping watchful eyes on them. We need to stick together. Find a way out of this bind. Time to cast my own shadow. Kai heads in another direction and doesn't look back. Master Don enters. Kai! Kai keeps walking and exits. Master Don watches after Kai. I need to talk with him, but you first. Nice flying. Jar and Master Don walk. How did my great-grandfather know? How could he have possibly known about Cyrillus? Clearly he had inside information. A rogue pirate, fresh from the battle, pats Jar on the back and laughs. Jar nods to him, distracted. From who? Well, I can't say for certain. However, I can tell you he had eyes for a certain Tharnian female, and she him. Tharnians are quite something in the sack, so I've heard. Stop. No, 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 no. He, he and a... And a Tharnian? A Tharnian? Why didn't you tell me this before? You weren't ready to hear it. They were very much in love. They killed her when they found out, and he swore to avenge her death. And he was doing quite a job until they got him. Jar continues walking, head down, in denial. Master Don follows. This can't be true. Master Don nods. It is. I said Morose was like a father dream, but he was more than that. He was my father. Jar freezes and looks Master Don up and down. What? We're related? Yes, we are. I'm what's known as a Tharman, half Tharnian, half human. Jar shakes his head. I can't believe this. Master Don grins and opens his arms. Oh, come on, give me a hug. We're family! Jar looks at Master Don in horror. Later, aboard the warmonger in Vegas' ready room. Jar and Roulette enter Vegas' ready room. Roulette pushes Jar forward. Vegas sits on a high-backed leather swivel chair. She wears a one-piece, short orange dress with a two-way zipper, long boots, and a peaked cap. She looks like a correctional officer that enforces laws most men would want to break. She crosses her legs and waves Roulette away. Roulette exits. How did you know about Cerulius? 
Jar forces himself to focus. Let's just say I've got family out this way. You cannot fathom what you have cost me. You could have had... We could have had so much fun together. He takes in her beauty for a moment. Then his expression becomes deadpan. I've kept my part of the bargain. It's time for you to keep yours and cut us loose. Vegas puts her hands on her hips and glares. Another idea. I shall introduce you to the zenith of pain and have my way with your fair maiden. Though how fair she will remain when I've finished is questionable. Jar pulls the blaster from his jacket. You'll have Ghana and Kai released. Did you hit your head out there? Do or die, Vegas. I've done so much killing today, one more's not going to cut into my sleep. Vegas leaps at Jar, and the two fall. The blaster slides into the wall. Vegas pulls away and chops Jar in half. He buckles, then raises a boot to her face. Vegas falls, stands, then leaps on Jar, bringing him to the ground. Cat-like, Vegas springs up and hurries towards the blaster. She almost has it, but his ankle tapped by Jar. They scramble to their feet. Vegas turns to face Jar and cops a blow to the solar plexus. Jar manages to pin her down and puts his hands around the throat. She stops struggling, licks her lips, and raises an eyebrow. He releases her, stands, and retrieves the blaster. She beckons him back. Roulette enters. He whips out a blaster. Stand down or be taken down. Vegas springs up and snatches the blaster from Jar and pistol whips him with it. She kicks him to, she kicks him to the ground and stands over him. He groggily stands and raises his hands as Vegas shakes her head and fires a glare at Roulette. We could have made each other feel so alive. Alas, now you expire instead. Pop! Just like that. Vegas raises the blaster. Crackle. Kai's voice floods the ship on loudspeaker. Jar! Time to go, soldier! I do hate surprises, don't you? Jar and Vegas lock eyes. She rubs her neck and eyes Jar just a little erotically. He shakes his head. She pouts. Elsewhere aboard the warmonger, Kai, grinning like a monkey, holds down a lever built into a flashing panel. Dozens of pirates mill around him, none daring to approach. I've found your self-destruct. I've also armed it. As soon as I let go, boom chaka boom We look real pretty in space. Don't do it, you'll kill us all. I'd expect Jar and Ganna to be off this tub ASAP. Cross me, and it's fireworks time. Back in Vegas' ready room, Vegas purses her lips. She glances at Roulette. Unlikely that primate has done this alone. He had help. And when I find out from whom... Master Dun. Fly, be free. Roulette, get Ganna and bun bundle them out of here. You ship 101. Roulette slyly nods understanding. I also want a prisoner. Never. I'll die before you take me. Although it could prove interesting. Jar feigns deep thought. The pirate named Masterdom. He'll be my hostage. Vegas is confused. She sizes Jar up. Shortly after, outside the cells. The cell door opens and Jar sprints in. Crouching near the door, Ganna launches herself at him with a flying kick. He is struck in the chest and falls to the ground. Ganna poses to strike, but recognizes him. Jar! Oh, baby, I thought I'd never see you again. Jar goes to sit up, but Ganna remains sitting on him. She plants a kiss on his lips. They embrace. He rubs her chest. There's no time. She puts her finger over his lips, and they're face to face. Her eyes and breath compel him to stay. They kiss passionately. Oh, baby, come to me. Come to me now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Later, in space, a small black shuttle leaves the docking bay and streaks away from the warmonger. Inside the shuttle, Jar sits with Ganna by his side. They smile at each other coyly. Mastodon sits beside them. I hope Kai can hold them a bit longer. I still don't know why he's doing this. <clears throat> you sure took your time. Anyway, we're in a dawdling shuttle. We're not safe from Vegas yet. Ghana puts her arms around Jar. Back on the warmonger, Vegas watches the shuttle on the view screen. She turns to Roulette. Did we really get outboxed by a dumb soldier? Someone will drift for this. They won't get far. We can designate the explosives in that shuttle any time. Take it from here. Get him to stand down and then whack him. Work on his thirst. Vegas exits. Roulette operates a display and Kai appears on screen. Vegas fixes him with a look of disdain. Kai, 
They're free and they're safe. How do I know they're safe? Give me a channel to their ship. I need to hear it from Jar. Kai takes a deep breath. He drops his eyes. Back aboard the shuttle, Gana wanders across to Jar and strokes the side of his head gently. They kiss. Master Don watches, fascinated. Is that painful? Far from it. This is what lovers do back on our world. Crackle. Jar! Jar! Are you okay? Yeah. Watch yourself, or you might become one of the good guys. Never. I'm just a born pyromaniac. Ganna! Ganna, you're okay? Better than okay. Since when did you get to be the hero? That doesn't fit, but I'm jamming it on anyways. I'll come back for you. I promise. Some of us can't be saved. Ganna, tell your sister I'm sorry. Jar and Ganna exchange confused glances. Master Don nods. Aboard the warmonger, Roulette watches Kai intensely. Now, you know they're safe. I'm true to my word. Stand down, there will be no repercussions, and we'll share a nice, strong drink together. Roulette indicates a decanter full of something strong. Two empty glasses sit before it. Kai considers the offer. His eyes soften on the decanter, then go back to Roulette and become as hard as glass. You know, I could have saved my own skin, but for what? I've already lost it all. You can still be saved. Drink up. Roulette slowly reaches for his sword. Drink void, pirate. Kai's face controls and his hands shake. His eyes go wide and he yells. Roulette whips out his sword. Moments later, the warmonger sails through space. Kaka kaboom! It explodes spectacularly. Back aboard the shuttle, Jar, Ganna, and Mastodon watch in horror as debris strikes the shuttle and causes it to rock. Kai! Not you too. Ganna comforts Jar as tears begin to form in his eyes. He knew Vegas would come after us, even if he stood down. Jar's head sinks into his hands. Suddenly I'm glad I came along for the ride. You told him to do it? I freed him and told him how to do it. He did the rest, said he would finally get to be the hero. There are no heroes. Jar exhales deeply and looks at Mastodon ruefully. Later, in space, the shuttle cruises through the stars. One bright star twinkles. Inside the control room, stars roll by on the view screen. Jar and Ganna sit back on the flight couch. Mastodon sits nearby, amusing himself with a video game. I'm glad you came back for me. Thought I was a bee, huh? Ganna smirks. Where are we having? Jar looks at Ganna sheepishly. I can't go home. The president knows I'm an outlaw, even if the media hasn't got a hold of it. You can get a new identity, please. No. We'll find a new place to call home. They will come after me, but that's okay. I'm not afraid anymore. Ganna looks over at Mastodon and bites her lip. She's not buying it. She crosses her arms and turns away from Jar. He notices. Is this what's called a uh, lover's tiff? Jar glares at Mastodon. Ganna glares at Jar. Let's just cruise while you both think about it. Mastodon makes himself scarce at speed. Later, the shuttle ambles through space. A large asteroid ahead spins majestically in the distance. Aboard the shuttle, Jar lies back on his bunk. Stars go by through a porthole. He flicks on a screen and sees Ryder, a double-breasted satin fabric tuxedo with white shirt, French cuffs, and a silk sunflower-printed tie suggests he's had a pay raise. And the destruction of Tharnia is being blamed on a renegade from Earth. Jar, the belt butcher morose, who spearheaded the assault. A bounty has been placed on his head. The screen dissolves to a hollow snap of Jar back on Callan. He holds a blaster. Ryder is back on screen. In broader political news, the United Planet's bill for a galactic government has met with opposition. Six worlds refuse to yield sovereignty and have expressed concern over the loss of rights. As Ryder reads, the ship changes course. Jar sits up and snaps off the broadcast. Computer, we've changed course. Where are we headed? Destination course, Earth. Jar storms out of his quarters. Moments later in the control room, Jar strides in to see Mastodon at the helm, back to Jar. He slows. Mastodon, you've changed course? Mastodon remains facing the view screen. Why are we heading back to Earth? Mastodon points to Ganna, sitting alongside him. She stands and goes over to Jar. I can't go back. I can't. 
Ghana takes his head in her hands and comforts him. Shh. It'll be okay. I'll take care of it. A new start, I promise. Jar strokes her hair gently, and his eyes go red. He fights back tears. Boom. Everything rocks, and Ghana and Jar are thrown into the wall. Mastodon hovers over the scanner. Jar stands up and tries to help Ghana to her feet. She declines and springs up like a cat, wary and on edge. Talk to me, Mastodon. We're being fired on. All three of them look to the view screen. The shuttle cruises through space. Whoosh! Space shivers and a black, wasp-like ship appears and circles the shuttle. Streamlined and slick, angry orange light blazes from the hull. Wing-mounted cannons fire. Inside the control room, everything rocks again. The wasp ship hovers menacingly on the view screen. Jar studies the controls. Right. Let me see what I can do. Don't bother. You're outgunned and you're flying a brick. If you've got a white flag, start waving it. Ghana puts her arms around Jar. The stealth craft overtakes the shuttle and turns to face it. The shuttle slows. They drift, face to face. The large asteroid in the background is now close. Ghana releases her hug, steps closer to the screen, and then looks over to Jar. True confession, Forbes once asked me to betray you, but I never could. The ship on the view screen is replaced by the face of Vegas, now dressed in a tight-fitting flight suit. She pouts. Jar, did you really think I'd let you leave me? She cites Ganna. Ganna spits on the deck and glares at Vegas. Boss, I've, uh, I've captured them. Oh, please, turncoat. We know you showed Kai how to arm the self-destruct. Your ship is laden with explosives. Boom! For what it's worth, you were right. You were used by the United Planets. Ganna nods. They knew Tharnia would never bow to their galactic order. If only they cared about sex as much as they did about ruling the galaxy. Life would be so much grander for us all. For you. We don't have to be enemies. Ganna fires Jar a glare. He shrugs his shoulders and looks awkward, as though he's only interested in buying time. The bounty on your head says otherwise, and it will buy me many naughty pleasures. Kiss, kiss. Vegas blows a kiss, and the view screen returns to the wasp-like ship. Weapons on the ship begin to glow. Jar takes the controls. The engine whines as the shuttle increases speed toward Vegas's ship. So this is it. In the absence of an escape capsule, I salute you both. Even I can't wriggle my way out of this one. We may be dead, but she'll always be trash. Kaboom! Vegas' ship explodes and breaks up into thousands of fragments that are flung across space. Another ship emerges from behind it. Another ship! It's been hiding behind that asteroid! On the view screen, a tinted gray and white Mertzer bears down on them. Rugar. They all close in on the view screen. Rugor's Mertzer cruises through the debris and closes on the shuttle. <coughs> Mastodon is elated and intrigued. Jar frowns. Ganna puts her hand on her hip, suspicious. He, he saved us! Only to kill us. He's been waiting to ambush us. I destroyed his homeworld, remember? Let's fire on him. We only have a mining laser. If he threw a sandwich at us, we might be able to cut it in half. Crackle. Jar! I'm here. How did you know? I picked up your comrade's message and set my trap. Then I intercepted Vegas' transmission. Let's get on with it, then. Jar takes the controls and increases speed. The ship closes on Rugor's Mertzer. Mastodon drops his head. I now set you free. We are even. Mastodon and Jar exchange confused glances. I don't understand. I destroyed your world. During civil insurrection, there have been times when one Tharnian would take their ceremonial dagger and kill another. Does one punish the dagger or the criminal? Don't try to absolve me. I am the belt butcher. Ghana puts her hand on Jar's arm and shakes her head. Even under the orders of war, there can be honor between soldiers. <clears throat> Killing you restores neither my world nor my son. I was more than the dagger. I had a choice. You should know that. Ghana lowers her gaze. Mastodon fires an angry glare at Jar and fiddles with the controls, causing static and a squelch. Uh, transmission problems here. Jar said he had no choice. Repeat, no choice. Do you copy? Uh, over. Silence. That's not true. Mastodon motions to strangle Jar. 
the United Planets are aligning the cosmos for their galactic government. Dread's been an unwitting cog in their machine. That's how it was. So I overheard. I've seen how they achieve their ends, and I don't like being the means. I intend to stand against them. A mere human against such forces? What do you expect the outcome to be? I can't control the outcome. I can control what I stand for. Anna's can you. Gada squeezes Jar's hand and relents with a sigh. Where you go, I will follow. Your idea, while almost certainly foolish, bombastic blather without foundation, intrigues me. We shall speak of this further. The communication is cut. Mastodon shakes his head. A Tharnian ally. You are much like your great-grandfather. What he started, you have finished. Jar looks to the stars. No, no. We're not finished. Not by a long shot. Jar kisses Ghana on the forehead. She curls up next to him. A star twinkles at them. He smiles grimly. The Mertzer and Shuttle, side by side. Power engines and sail through the stars.